Hi there, Martin here. Thank you for joining me once again. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, yeah, this week I thought I would kind of make a return back to a piece I did back in November. Um, the rune-inspired um, Sapili dish. Um, you, you may have uh, you may have seen it. If not, take a look. And also. Um, the reason I was inspired to go back to that sort of was because m one of my subscribers, Bacon Soda, um, Brendan from um, from Ulster in Ireland, came second um, in uh, his local wood turning uh, groups uh, competition with a design inspired by the rune sapili dish that I made. So well done, Brendan, for that. I'm really, really chuffed for you. It's really good news. Um, this week's project um, is on a piece of olived ash. Um, it's 14 and a half inches in diameter, um, and I hope you can see that. Um, I've put a pyrography um, Celtic design in there as well. That's that's my own design, um, incorporating um, another another sort of arty thing that I do, which is pyrography. Yeah. Here's how I turned the olive ash Celtic pyrography dish platter thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the video. Bye for now. business today which is called cross grain furniture um, and I need to show you this olive ash tabletop that um, he's made it's um, about five and a half foot long by four foot wide ish it's lovely um, and he's given me the off cut at the end which came off um, here somewhere that I can turn a really large um, platter out of. Uh, so first of all I need to make it round I suppose. So let's get it over on the bandsaw and turn it round. I'm squaring off the blank roughly with a with a big ruler so I can find a find a rough centre um, from which I can uh, I can mark out mark out the circle to cut on the bandsaw. So there is my vague centre, and I'm just going to drill a drill a halt um, screw. A, Screw a screw in there, that will give me a, a bit of a compass. I just need to move you a little bit. I've got myself a mark now, which is there. I don't know if you can see that very well, um, but I've marked out roughly where I want the well, where I want the blank to come from. Now I can get it on the bandsaw and trim it up. Now, to be fair, I'm not the world's greatest bandsaw person, so being extremely careful with my fingers. Um, I'm going to cut this blank down around the mark that I made a minute ago. Being very, very careful with my fingers.
it's not the um, I don't think it's the roundest bulb length that's ever been um, ever been cut on a bandsaw but for my yeah my first go it's not bad I don't think right let's get it back to the lathe and see what we can do with it right then I've got the blank back at um, back in my own workshop now um, and I want to find out obviously where the sensor is and I can get a maximum bowl out of here of about 16 inches uh, 300 sorry 410 millimeters ish <coughs> if I'm lucky now if you remember in the last part of the video um, I said I want these screw holes in the back of the piece um, so if they do happen to be seen a little bit I can fill them um, and just make sure that they are hidden on the underside of the piece so I need to find the bottom so I need to find the center of this side and depending upon the figure and, and how the bulb looks um, I'm going to put a Celtic design in the centre and now whichever one fits nicest which I think will be the smaller one will go in the middle um, and I'll do that with some um, pyrography I think that would be the one I might need to print it down a little bit smaller I'm not sure. um, so first of all I need to find the centre of Right, so the centre is roughly there. So I will screw the faceplate onto it and get it onto the lathe. Ugh, something to say. And now because my lathe won't cope with um, 16 inches over the bed, um, I've got to turn the head, which will be fun because I've not done them. Um, I've not done anything like that before. Um, slow it right down first before I put the piece on it. Yep. Face mask on blanks in, everything's nice and tight, let's get going. the center of the piece which is um, slightly frustrating um, so I'll have to be very careful when um, when going into the center so I'm going to true off the face now nothing's hitting all the screws seem to be good in the back so let's do the face
I've managed to get a reasonable, reasonable cut um, with a scrape um, on the outside, but I want to take it down just a little bit more um, and also flatten off the bottom here so I stand at least a, a reasonable chance of putting a half decent finish um, on the bottom here. I'll probably have to make the recess a bit deeper, but I'm not overly concerned about that. What I am concerned about though is um, making this as flat as possible. So, to help try and shed some weight from the top, um, because I, I can see that um, the piece is somewhat thicker up the top here, um, I'm going to work on the back of the lathe um, to try and sort of even out the thickness um, of the piece, and hopefully then it will run smoother. So, fingers crossed, I've not done this before, everything's locked tight, and hope for the best. And I'm having to work wrong hand. nice sheer scrape going on uh, on here so I can um, start to put a finish on the bottom. sanding of it now. Um, it's going to take a while so I won't bore you with it. And I'll come back in a little while. we go, that's sanded down to 240 grit now um, and it's looking really nice. I'm actually quite surprised how nice that's looking. Um, I'm going to give it a clean with some methylated spirits or as our friends in America call it denatured alcohol. So I'm going to give it a A wipe down. And see how it looks. And I think what I'm going to do is like the rune inspired um, Sapili dish I did back in November, I'm going to give it give it a scorch I think ah, right then got the got the torch <clears throat> I've given the lay the dust down as well and also with the burning I'm hoping I might be able to lose or hide these screw holes a little bit it could all go horribly wrong. The piece could crack. So I keep the piece turning as much as possible. So the bits I've just burned have a chance to cool off. I'm not 
not worried if it comes out a little bit blocky. it's not too hot it's raised the grain um, which is why I do it before um, another another sanding so I'm going to take it down to 400 grit now and then I'll do 600 and then add some oil right. yeah that feels good right and now I'm going to just put a decent coat of Danish oil over it now. That should darken it down and bring out where I've burnt it. Like so. It looks good. I'm pleased. should soak in quite a long way because where the burning opened up whoops opened up the pores in the wood the oil should sink in quite a long way so I'll give it another coat which also helps take out the dust Plus the burning's also quite well hidden, the, um, those screw marks. Right, I'll give that a couple of minutes to um, dry off, because the wood's still quite warm from the burn, and I'll give it a spin and uh, then add some sanding sealer. Uh, right, reversed into the chuck now, um, thankfully, and I've got it running as true as possible. Um, it's still a bit heavy on this side, um, but I think that could just be because of the density of the wood. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit more off the edge. I'm going to take a little bit more off the edge here um, and see how we uh, and see how we go, because I've got a little mark here. Yeah, I've got a little mark here from where I dropped it. Getting there. It's still wobbly as hell, but never mind. Um, right, for the design that I want to put in the middle, well, I want to have a bit of a lip well yeah a lip of the piece which is the same distance in from the edge as the as the base which looking down it is about there so this is going to be the lip which I might scoop out a little bit and then dive into the bottom but I might just leave it really plain I'm not really not sure yet and I'm still struggling with getting something in the um, in the center so we'll have to we'll have to play with that I'm happy with the thickness of the rim um, it's about six seven mil maybe eight um, I'm happy with that so now I'm going to take this part out to become the base of the platter right I think I've solved the problem of reaching the middle. I was having a look at the um, at the diameter of the piece and I thought I might be able to get it back working straight down the lathe which is what I've done but as you can see I've got about two millimeters of clearance down there which is which is fine because it's not hitting so I've got no worries which means I can get into the center of the piece now. Hey, good. Yeah, 
yeah, that feels good. So I'm just going to flatten off the bottom with the scraper and just make the, make this surface as smooth as possible so I can um, sand it. pleased with that it's going to look very nice indeed so I'm going to give it I haven't done any oil or burning on it yet um, because I want to put the Celtic design on it first um, and then I can burn I can burn around that I'm just putting on some Methylated spirits or denatured alcohol just to take the dust um, out of the grain. And then I'm going to take the whole thing off the lathe, including the chuck, um, because I don't want to take it off the chuck because I've now got it running true. Well, fairly true. And um, if I take it off the chuck, I'm worried it might warp or I won't be able to get it back true again. I've had some lunch and I've printed off three more, um, three more of the designs. Decide now which one to use. Be, be that one. So this one. <clears throat> Going to use this design. Now I need to work out the orientation of it. Okay, I've found the centre of the piece, which is which is where that little pencil mark there is. And I've got some tape because I need to tape this, tape the design down. I haven't got any masking tape. Right, that is the centre of my design, and I haven't got a pin either. Annoyingly. Um, so I'm going to make a little hole in the centre of the design and then put the screw over the centre of the hole and then orientate the design around the centre until I find the way that I want the design to look, which is going to be like that. Oops. Stick it down. Like so. <coughs> right now, um, I need to get the design off the paper onto the wood. And I'm going to use this stuff. Um, Saral transfer paper. It's really good. It works just like just like the carbon paper does. And all that does is that it sits underneath like so. And then I can transfer the design onto the wood. 
for which I need a pen. Just like this one. And then it's the time consuming process then of just going over the lines So now all I need to do is go over all of these lines. So you don't need to watch this because it will be very, very boring. design done. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, it probably looks like a real mess. And to be honest, it is. Um, the transfer paper isn't transferring particularly well onto the finish of the wood, which is a bit of a surprise because every other piece of wood I've ever done it on, it comes out beautifully. So, um, I can see the design, but I'm going to have to lean down and burn it almost looking at the indent the pen has made through the paper into the wood. I'm using a, um, a machine from Axminster, Axminster Tools and Machinery. Um, it's a German machine called StarTech. Variable heat adjustable heat from 450 degrees up to 750 degrees and they normally come with these tips um, they're quite can you see that tips like that but, um, with fairly thick copper tips too but what I find is these thinner tips um, that I think normally fit a Peter Child's machine or a fire writer and these particular tips um, this particular tip is for a fire writer I've got a whole collection of tips so right I'm going to start off at about 630 degrees for this yeah I don't know if you can see that 630 degrees is a good is a good temperature for this burn. And this particular tip gives me a nice line. pleased with that. Um, now the really great thing about the um, the transfer paper is that it rubs out just like pencil and I brought a rubber out with me so I could rub out the designs getting lighter. The burn marks are still the same but the design itself, as a whole, is getting lighter. So, there we are. There's the design on the piece, but now I need to change the tip because the design itself isn't actually finished. Um, needs to be a bit more three-dimensional so I need to add some shading so I've got to change the tip to that one 
really don't think you can see that very well. That one there, look. Can you see that on the back of my hand? That's a flat tip, which is really good. Or perfect, in fact, for shading. So I just need to change the tip. I'm going to turn the temperature down to about 620 degrees for this. Um, give it a few seconds to warm up. Because yeah, when you add all the shadows and stuff, the design seems to uh, seems to pop off the wood. Yeah, that's good. That's at about the same temperature as last time, about 630, 600. 40 odd degrees and then you just simply follow the lines along I give a little drag to give a, a fade There's the piece on the wood, um, pyrographed onto the wood, but I've got to go, I've got to carefully look around the whole piece to see if I've missed anything, um, like that bit there, I've missed a shadow there, so I just touch in, just touch in the shadows. Okay, back on the lathe, um, I want to try and frame the, um, the knot work I've done. So I'm going to use the blowtorch in that kind of position just to burn in a line just on the curve over here of, um, of the rim. And I'm also going to turn the outside of the rim almost completely black if I can. So I've dusted the lathe down, and I'm going to light the torch, let the flame settle for a bit, and then I'm just going to slowly turn the piece in the chuck, like so, and hopefully I'll get a decent line. Back to three, sorry, two forty grit on this now, just to sand, just to sand it back, so I get um, more stripes than anything else, and then go up to four hundred. I'm not going to do the centre. I don't want to do anything else to the, to this bit. I just want to go in to about here-ish with the two forty and then the four hundred. Where did I put the oil? There it is. 
there it is. Danish oil as usual. Now. Ready? This should just pop like mad. Look, yummy. Hope you can see that okay. Look at all the dust that's coming out of the grain. And there we are, finished. Yep, I'm mightily happy with that. Um, yeah, so thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, uh, and I hope it inspired you as well. Um, I've really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed doing the project this week. Um, yeah, join me again soon, where um, I hope to um, produce something maybe as spectacular or maybe not I don't know yet um, we'll have to see so thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you all again soon bye for now